So I beg on go do to like talk Animals they're in human form Body man nobody like work But you must hustle if you want job in Hi guys, welcome back to my channel It's your girl Eunice Abiola aka Eunice Abby And in today's video guys, we have a new tutorial of this lovely dress I want to welcome you guys to 2023 Happy New Year guys, because I've not said that officially This is the face behind this channel And you'll be seeing more of this face this year And here is our first tutorial I hope you enjoy watching this tutorial Thanks for watching guys So guys, the first step is to iron my fabric I'll go ahead and iron my fabric properly and now the next stage is to fold your fabric and cut it out and here is how you fold your fabric you to get the length of the fabric you take your half length or shoulder to waist and you add 0 0.5 inch seam allowance for the width of the fabric you divide your bust by four and add the seam allowance you would like to work with for this person her bust is 33 inches and test three divided by four is about 8.25 then plus two inches seam allowance will give me 10.25 and that is what i did then i brought out another fabric for the back piece and i added two inch extra allowance to that back piece i'll go ahead and mark out that two inches that i added for the back piece and i'll roll that into a straight line that is going to be the zipper allowance now let's mark everything else proper for the neck weight i'm working with a net neck width of 3.5 inches that's what i marked and a neck depth of three inches okay three inches yeah then i'll go ahead and connect that with my curved ruler after which i'll mark out the shoulder divided by two her shoulder is 15 divided by two is 7.5 so i'll go ahead and mark that 7.5 note we are marking from the front piece not from the zipper allowance then i'll come down by one inch because our shoulder is not straight then i would connect that to the neck width yeah the next stage is to calculate the upper chest line or the armhole line and i'll divide her bust which is 33 by 6 i got 5.5 plus 1.5 inch and that gives me 7 inches that is her armhole depth and from that one inch point i'll mark that seven inches which will be her armhole line then from the neck area i'm going to mark eight inches in order for me to get a straight line you know we came down by one inch from the other end that is why we marked seven inches and i'll label that a which signifies armhole line then i'll mark the bust point which is nine inches okay after marking the bust point i'll mark the under bust which is 12 inches okay then when i'm done with that i will roll that into a straight line after which i'll go ahead and mark out the waistline which is 15.5 inches i will use my meter rule for this one 15.5 inches and i think max 15.5 inches not 15 inches so her waistline is 15.5 inches and i'll go ahead to roll that into a straight line and i'll label that bust i'll label this under bust then i'll label this waist the next step is to rule what i have on the shoulder which is 7.5 on that armhole line I will label that 7.5 and connect it to form a straight line. We're about to get our armhole curve. Then, you know, we have 7 inches in between that point. I will divide that by 2, which will give me 3.5 inches. I will go ahead now and input that half, you know, just to get the armhole curve. I'll mark 3.5 inches, then go in by 0 0.5 inches. Then I'll go ahead to connect from the shoulder slope to that point. To get my full armhole curve, I'll divide her bust by 4, which gave 8.5. Then I'll go ahead and mark out my 8.5 inches. Remember, we are not marking from the zipper allowance area. We're marking from the center front of the front body. After marking the 8.5 inches, I'll go ahead and add 2 inches seam allowance, like you see me doing. Then I'll go ahead with my curved ruler and connect from that point, from the 0 0.5 inch point to the 8.5 inch that we marked and that gives us our armhole curve i hope this is self-explanatory okay the next step is to mark um, my waist divided by four plus the same two inches seam allowance her waist is 26 divided by four 
is 6.5 and i'll add two inches seam allowance and that's what i just connected then i will add one extra inch for the dart that i'm going to be marking and i'll go ahead to connect that into a straight line as well the next step is to mark out the dart and we're going to mark out the dart by dividing her nipple to nipple by two or bust pan her nipple to nipple is seven divided by two is 3.5 and i'm going to go ahead and mark from that point i'll come down by one inch from the bust line and that is where i'm going to be taking the dart from so i'll take 0 0.5 inches on both sides of the line on both sides of that line and that will give me a dart of one inch i'll take 0 0.5 inches and i'll take another 0 0.5 inch then i'll connect the two of them to form the dart which implies that we took one inch dart okay 0 0.5 inch on both sides the next step is to add 0 0.5 inch allowance and this allowance is what we will use to join the upper bodies to the skirt part yeah it's very important to add allowance you can add any allowance you want but 0 0.5 inch is what i'll be working with okay and i will extend the dart legs to match with the allowance point and i'll use my scissors to cut out the parts that we won't be using now now, here's the difference between the front and the back part the neck depth for the front for the back part i mean is one inch and that's what i'll mark right now i will use my curved ruler to get the curve for the back neck depth okay after which we we'll work on the armhole which is the second difference between the front bodies and the back bodies the armhole for the back bodies you do not go in by 0 0.5 inch you just rule from that half point there and you mark it to the 8.5 um inch at that point okay i'm going to go ahead and cut out the back part first and i'll cut out the um the armhole area first cut out the um shaped part then i'll go ahead and cut out the back neck depth and yes we're done cutting the back now it's time for the zipper allowance i'll go ahead and mark one inch then i'll mark half inch at that point yes then i would connect the two of them i'm marking it this way so as to get rid of the zip bulge that we usually have after fixing our zip then i'll go ahead and add 0 0.5 inch allowance that we use to turn that part with the lining okay and i'll connect that to form a straight line okay so i did it this way to ensure that uh the zipper part of this clute is flat okay then i'll go ahead and cut out the shoulder area okay then i'll remove the front piece at this point because we are kind of done with it then to also get rid of zipper bulge i will go up by half an inch and connect from that point to the other edge that you see me doing then i'll go in with my scissors and cut out that part all those things that we just did now is just to get rid of zipper bulge okay and i would you know trim out the excess that we we'll have at that point yeah so guys i'll go ahead and transfer the dart from the front area to the back area we're not working with the dart now but i just want to mark it just to show you guys how to mark the dart okay the next step is to trim out our front neckline and front armhole so i'll trim out the front neckline and also trim out the front armhole and yes everything is looking like it should at this point now let's work on the skirt part to fold for the skirt part you divide the hip circumference by four plus seam allowance and you add 3.5 extra inches for overlap okay and you have to cut out two pieces on fold and one will be for the front and one will be for the back okay right my client's hip is 35 inches 35 divided by 4 is 8.75 plus 2 inches seam allowance is 10.75 and plus 3.5 inch overlap allowance gives 14.25 so what we folded the fabric into was 14.25 and we cut out two pieces of that one for the front and one for the back piece so the first step we are going to take right now is to mark out 0.5 inch allowance at the top of the skirt which we will use to join the skirt part to the upper bodies then i'll connect that into a straight line guys ignore this line that you can see here this straight line here i'll go ahead now to mark her hip point which is eight inches i'll mark that eight inches and connect that into a straight line that
that is her hip point so guys we're going to calculate something right now the full length of her dress is 40.5 inches that is the length of the dress okay then the length of the upper bodies will subtract that 40.5 inches from the 15.5 that is her upper bodies or half cuts okay then what we'll do that we'll have 25 inches and the length of the ruffle will be 5 inches so the length of this skirt part is going to be 20 inches because the ruffle is going to be 5 inches okay then i'll add half an inch seam allowance so that i can join the skirt part of the ruffle so i marked 20 and that 20.5 so the 20 signifies where the skirt is supposed to stop and the 0 0.5 inches is the allowance i'll be using to join the ruffle i hope that's self-explanatory so now we're going to mark out that our overlap allowance that we added which is 3.5 inches okay now go ahead and mark out that 3.5 inches which is the overlap allowance that we are going to use to get our overlap okay and i'll connect that into a straight line then the one for the front piece i will go ahead and fold that fold that and iron it to get a crease at that point so i will go in with my iron now and iron that properly and the second part is the back piece i'll go ahead and mark out the zip allowance for the back i'll mark two inches from of that from that point and try to get a straight line so the zip allowance i'm marking now is two inches and i'll connect that to form a straight line after which i'll place the already folded front piece so that it aligns with the zipper area and extend the hip line then i'll mark 1.5 inches at that hip line and mark half an inch at the waist line okay this is to enable it align with the upper bodies which is the upper part of this dress okay then i'll go ahead now and connect that into a straight line using not a straight line basically just a little curve i'll use my curved ruler but the straight part of the curved ruler to connect that point and i'll add half an inch seam allowance so it matches with the upper part that's we marked earlier if you remember what we did so after marking the half an inch i'll go ahead and still connect like i did before okay then at the length of this um skirt at the length area i'm going to extend the line as well then mark one inch at that point i'll mark one inch and connect that okay what i did next was to come down by five inches from the hip point okay come down for, by five inches from the hip point and i'll mark one inch at that point as well i will like extend the line and mark one inch at that point as well connect that point to the end of the skirt and use my hand i wanted to use a curved drill but you can just use your hand to you know form i don't know what what to call it now just form the bump curve a little bit can you see how i just did it just a slight curve nothing too curvy okay the next step is to input her waist measurement divided by four plus two inches allowance and one inch for that and her waist is 26 divided by four is 6.5 plus two inches and plus one extra inch that is 9.5 that's what i marked at that point then for the hip area for the hip area her hip is 35 divided by four plus two inches 35 divided by 4 is 8.75 then plus the 2 inches gives 10.75 and that is what i marked at that point okay yeah so i will go ahead and connect from the waist to the hip area okay so the next step is to mark the end of the skirt the um end of the skirt yeah so what i'll do next is to divide the hip by four plus 1.25 allowance and that gave me 10 inches the hip divided by four is 8.75 plus 1.25 gives 10 inches i did not just put the hip you know if we're doing a pencil skirt we'll just put the hip measurement divided by four but at this point i don't want it to be too tight at that point so i added 1.25 allowance okay the next step is to get rid of the excess um, fabric that we used to have at the waist area will come down by 0 0.5 inch on the front piece only and we'll connect that using the curve drawer like you see me doing we'll connect that to the edge can you see 
come down by 0 0.5 inch and use your curved driller to connect just for the front alone be careful to cut out for the front alone this will help make that place be very fitted it's just like getting rid of the excess fabric that usually um, forms at the stomach area okay so this is okay we're done with the front part right now you cut it out the same way you cut it out with the fold present just do it like that then after that i'll go ahead and notch that point that 3.5 inch point that we marked earlier then i will open up the fabric slash it into two pieces because the front piece should be two pieces okay then i'll go ahead and work on the back piece and cut out the excess at the zipper area and we are done with our back piece and for the front piece we have to adjust it right now to give us what we want this is you can do this based on whatever you want at first i came in by 1.5 inches i came in by 1.5 inches then i tried to use my free hand to form any curve i want just use your discretion do whatever you want like make your curve however you want it to look like so if, as you can see i drew about three types of curve and i picked the best one for me i tried to bring it out a little bit i just do your thing and get the curve you desire okay just keep drawing it until you get the exact thing you want and when i got what i wanted i cut it out and here is how it is going to look like when we put it together okay it's already looking nice now that we are done cutting out everything we need we are going to trace out everything we have cut out on the lining piece we're going to cut them out on the lining piece but before we cut them out on the lining piece we're going to gum the lining piece with gum stay i've gone ahead to cut out everything on the lining piece and i also you know gummed the lining piece with gum stay before anything else place the lining and the fabric piece right sides facing each other and stitch as shown using 0 0.5 inch seam allowance stitch there using 0 0.5 inch allowance and stitch at the other end using 0 0.5 inch allowance you will do the same thing for the second part of the back piece you will also go ahead and stitch there using 0 0.5 inch seam allowance as well and 0 0.5 inch then for the front part right sides facing each other as well you stitch the neck part and you top stitch stitch the sides with 0 0.5 inch as well the back part as well you do the same thing you stitch the neck part the neck width area you stitch it using 0 0.5 inch seam allowance and you top stitch you stitch the sides using 0 0.5 inches like i said earlier just do the same thing for all of them 0 0.5 inch and don't forget to top stitch your neck so that it lays flat i'm done stitching the front piece now as you can see here is how it looks okay and here is the back piece as well here is how it looks then here is the front piece guys for the front piece i only went ahead to turn the side seam and i left the center front area i left it and i just stitched it down with the lining so that it becomes like one piece because that's the point i'm going to be attaching the ruffles so there's no need to turn that point with the lining and i've already gone to turn the back piece with lining as well and here is what it looks like when i was done turning them with the lining at this point we're going to work on the dart nipple to nipple is 7 divided by 2 is 3.5 so i marked the 3.5 to form a straight line okay and i took 6.5 inches dart and half inch on both sides okay the length of the dart is 6.5 inches and the dart i took is one inch of course that's the allowance i added so um for the skirt parts i went ahead to note where i notched earlier and re notch it properly so that it can be visible to the eyes okay then i flipped it over so i can mark the dart on that place as well and from the notched part i marked the 3.5 inches okay so after the notched part is where you mark your dart from so i took half inch on both sides and i did a length of 6.5 inches as well like i did for the upper bodies and i took half inch on both sides i did the same thing for the second one as well from the notch point i marked 3.5 inch and took half inch on both sides and i took a dart of 6.5 inches in length and um one inch that like half inch on both sides then for the back piece i'm not taking it that until i've joined the upper bodies to the skirt part 
i joined them using 0.5 inches allowance and here is what i have when i was done um joining them on my sewing machine the next step is to mark out the dart but i'm going to consider the one inch zipper allowance that's what i marked then from that one inch point i'll mark the 3.5 inch area okay which is the nipple to nipple divided by two and i'll take half inch on both sides and connect them to form the dart okay same thing i did the length of the dart like as you see the upper part is 6.5 the lower part is 6.5 as well and here's what i have when i was done joining the dart now the next step is to take my zipper allowance which is one inch i'll mark out the one inch from the beginning to the end and i'll go to my sewing machine and stitch that down at this point you can go ahead to fix your zip here beginner it's so easy to fix your zip at that point now let's work on the other part i'll connect the two notched area together and before i connect it to the upper part i'll have to attach the ruffle at one edge the edge that is coming out i'll attach the ruffle at that end a little bit so that it's already present there before i connect that lower part to the upper part the ruffle is not going to get to the end of the inner one this one i'm showing you guys the ruffle will not get to the upper part so that it doesn't give a bulge underneath i don't know if that makes sense because if the gathered ruffle is getting to that upper part it might give a bulge okay so i'm going to just attach the ruffle a little bit at this point before i now join them together and attach it to the upper part just watch what i'm doing critically so you understand me better from our calculations the length of the ruffle should be five inches but we're going to add 1.5 inch allowance half inch for joining to the skirt part and the remaining one inch for hemming it okay so the length of the ruffle is 6.5 inches but the width of the ruffle is about 203 inches it is not about it is 203 inches guys so um, i'm going to go ahead now and you know create a a basic stitch two basic stitches on this um place and gather it gather it in a way that i can easily adjust it to the desired length so i will attach part of that ruffle to this point i'm going to pin it down pin it down a little bit as you can see can you, can you see what i'm doing then i would match the two notched area and also pin it down using a pin and i'll go to my sewing machine and join them together the way they are looking okay so i went ahead to join that ruffle a little bit as well as also join the two notched area together so that it's easy for me to attach that to the upper part so you see the reason why we attach the ruffle so that we when we join the upper part to the lower part the ruffle is already in it so it looks seamless okay here is the back part and here is the front part the next step will be to take our measurements we'll join the shoulders after which we'll take our measurements divided by two on each area for the bust we'll divide the bust by two and take the measurement divide the waist by two as well and take the measurement then i went ahead to mark out the hip point after marking out the hip point i took the hip measurement divided by two as well then i marked that okay when i was done marking that i connected that to the waistline and i went to my sewing machine to stitch that down and now i'm joining the remaining ruffle i went ahead to measure the part where the ruffle is supposed to be and i went ahead to stitch it down like you see me doing okay remember the ruffle is not supposed to get to the upper part after fixing the ruffle i went ahead to attach by sleeve and i pleated it a little bit if you notice the sleeve is not as big as the other one depending on the fabric you have you know make your sleeve as big as you would like and i went ahead to fix by zip lastly i pinned down my zipper before i went to my sewing machine to stitch it down and here is what i have okay 